everyone, Shabby Gamer here and welcome back to the WWE 2K15 Universe Mode and this which will be our next episode of the Attitude Era's Friday Night Raw is War. So let's have a quick look at the card we've got set for you this evening. I'm going to start things off with the world's greatest tag team, Charlie Haas and Shelton Benjamin, taking on the British Bruisers, Fit Finney and Lord Stephen Regal. Mark Henry will defend his European Championship against Sheamus. We'll see the continuing feud here between Kane and Chris Jericho. We will also see Stone Cold Steve Austin take on Hollywood Hulk Hogan. And our main event this evening will be The Rock taking on Edge. So without further ado, let's get straight into our first match of the evening. So as I said, our first match will be the world's greatest tag team, Charlie Haas and Shelton Benjamin, taking on the British Bruisers, Fit Finley and Lord Stephen Regal. And we are underway here with our first match of the evening. Now, of course, we do have our next pay-per-view coming up in about three weeks' time. We've got nobody set yet for the Tag Team Championship, so a win here for either of these two teams would definitely put them uh, the upper echelons of this uh, Tag Team rankings. Now, remember, we do also have a Championship match here for this evening as well. Mark Henry will defend that European Championship for the first time, I believe, as he takes on Sheamus. Now, Sheamus was one of the guys I was really hoping would pick up that European Championship at the competition we put out. Of course, um, I really wanted the first European Champion in this universe mode to actually be European. I was unlucky, however, Sheamus has got the opportunity tonight to, uh, to right that wrong and pick up the European Championship. Of course, both Regal and Finley were, were both in that competition as well. I think so was Charlie Haas and Shelton Benjamin, if I remember correctly. It's a great suplex there by Lord Stephen Regan. I bring in Fit Finley into the match. Of course, there is a very, very, very strong tag team roster here in this Attitude Era. Uh, got two great teams here. But we also have the likes of Undertaker and Kane. We've got the Acolytes, uh, Farouk and Bradshaw. Who else we got? We've got Evolution, Batista and Randy Orton. We've got the Outsiders, Kevin Nash and Scott Hall. Of course, the champions, Edge and Christian. There's a lot of very, very strong tag teams in this universe mode. And, uh, yeah, the next few weeks we'll be deciding who's going to be the lucky team to take on Edge and Christian at the next pay-per-view. And I've got a horrible feeling that Edge and Christian aren't the champions. I don't know why. I'm sure Edge and Christian are still the champions. I will double-check that and I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll make sure. But I'm sure Edge and Christian won the belts a couple of pay-per-views ago and they defeated... Uh, I think they defeated the Acolytes at the last pay-per-view to defend those belts successfully. Quick roll-up here by William Regal. Two. Only a two count. And of course, both Fit Finney and William Regal have been announced again for the 2K16 game, which is great. Uh, I'm going to try and bolster the Attitude Era roster up a bit more on next year's game. I'm going to try and have a hardcore championship. I'm going to use a lot of the ECW guys from the Attitude Era. Also going to have a cruiserweight championship as well. So we've seen the likes of um, obviously Rey Mysterio, Psychosis, uh, Juvi Guerrero, La Parker, uh, D. Malenko, Eddie Guerrero. All those sort of guys will be on there as well. And of course, tag team wise, we'll try and get the Hardys, uh, the, the Dudley Boys in there as well. It'd be great. As Regal hooks a leg and bridging for the pin. One, two. But Shelton Benjamin's there quickly enough to break it up. And I thought Regal could have had the match there. Hey, yeah, I'm really looking forward now to um, to the new game coming out. I think it'll be great. Much bigger roster is going to make it a lot easier for us as well to, um, to really make our universe mode stronger and bigger. Because uh, we're going to end up with like an extra 60 guys compared to this year's game. So it's really going to help us extend the rosters, especially with one of the new aspects as well, where you can now put one guy in more than one roster, which is great. So that means the likes of Global Force and Ring of Honor can share, for example, the Young Bucks and AJ Styles. They can work both rosters at the same time, which would be great. So that really does help us extend the amount of guys we've got in each roster. I've been, I've been planning it out at the moment, and I've got over 40 guys down for Global Force already. I've got about 45 guys already lined up for Attitude Era 
Uh, Ring of Honor is looking at about 35, 40 as well. So we're going to have a, a nice big roster for every single show. Lots of variation. Hopefully I can get everybody in that you guys want to see. Charlie Haas now brings William Regal back up to his feet. Beautiful suplex. Pulls him into center ring. Going to go for a pin here. Looks like he does. One, two. Only a two count. The AI in this game is terrible. I know I keep getting on about it, but Shelton Benjamin there showed absolutely no desire to come in and break that pin. He just casually walked in and walked in the complete wrong direction to try and uh, stop Finley. Big slam there by Charlie Haas again. And Finley catches a hold of Haas from behind. Allowing Regal the uh, the extra few seconds he needed to make his way back to his feet. And then a headbutt to Charlie Haas as well. And now Regal just with the punches to the back of the head. This really could have swung this match in favour of the Bruisers. As Regal makes the hot tag. But no, the hot tag never works. I've also been watching over the last couple of days a few of the um, the gameplay sort of snippets from 2K16, and they do look a hell of a lot better. The game seems to run a lot smoother. The the animations are great. I know, um, obviously, we're playing this on the PS3, the PS3 version here, so I know the PS4 version probably graphically looks a lot better than this. And uh, oh, 450 there by Shelton Benjamin. One, two, and three. That's enough, is it? I thought the referee made the free count there. Looked like Regal just caught the referee as he was making the count. I was sure that the match was over then. Shelton Benjamin picked up the victory that 450. Again going for the pin on Finley. But this time it's there. Regal was too slow into the ring. And the world's greatest tag team, Charlie Haas and Shelton Benjamin, pick up the victory. Well-deserved victory as well. It was one of them pinning combinations where the two guys just keep reversing each other. I hope they've knocked that out of next year's game. There's a beautiful suplex, which I thought would finish the match off. So we're not going to get to see Shelton Benjamin's uh, 450, but there's his complete shot finishing manoeuvre. And finally, it was a... Uh, it was a simple move that finished the match off, but Regal was just too slow across the ring, and that's a great victory here for the world's greatest tag team. They had definitely uh, put themselves in the forefront of this tag team division. However, there are still a couple of weeks left until the pay-per-view, and there's a lot of other great tag teams that will be uh, hoping to, to get that shot at the pay-per-view. I keep calling it the pay-per-view because I can't remember what the life it's going to be. I have to try and find out. But as I said, great win here for World's Greatest Tag Team. And they're going to take this momentum into the next few weeks. And our next match is going to be our European Championship match as Mark Henry defends against Sheamus. And here we go. Sheamus gets an opportunity here to become the European Champion in this universe mode. Of course, Mark Henry has not held this belt very long. I only picked it up a few weeks back. At SummerSlam. Sheamus uh, struggling here in the early exchange of this match. Mark Henry really using his strength to uh, to dominate Sheamus. And of course they are going to put the Nation of Domination into the uh, new game as well. So that's an interesting one. Not quite sure what I'm going to do with Mark Henry. Whether I drop him back into Attitude Era and use him as part of the Nation. However... Obviously, his attire is not going to match the rest. What I would like to do is, I know they, I think they used to have it before, the Superstar Threads, where you could create an attire for a wrestler. And you could just put it as, a, as an extra attire, rather than having to create a separate guy for it. Which I think would be quite good, but... Uh, yeah, I'd like to see that come back, and then I could create a Nation attire for Mark Henry. And uh, maybe even for The Rock as well. Sheamus now dropping Henry with that big suplex. Of 
twist in the arm of Henry, went for the clothesline. Henry managed to duck it and then just uses his his size and his girth just to take Sheamus down. And I will say, I've um, if you guys watch my videos, you would have noticed over the last few weeks I've been complaining that I've not been able to get my PlayStation online. I've figured out why now. It needed a system update, which I've done. So hopefully I can start downloading a couple of extra guys now. Uh, maybe a couple of things might come into effect as soon as this weekend at SummerSlam on the current day roster, which of course you can watch. If you go to the description below, you will find the link to all of the Universe Mode brands I'm currently running. We upload current day roster on a Monday. Now we've got Global Force Wrestling on a Tuesday, Ring of Honor on a Wednesday. We have uh, Retro Throwback Thursdays on a Thursday, of course. Attitude, as you're watching here on a Friday. And then Saturdays, we upload a Combat Zone Wrestling video. And then Sundays are always the pay-per-view. So yeah, if you check out below, you'll find the link to all the playlists. And you can check out any of those. And of course, as I just said, this Sunday is our SummerSlam pay-per-view on the current day roster. And we've got a few big matches planned for that one. Including Undertaker and Bray Wyatt clashing. I'm trying to think now what the other matches are. We've got a fatal four-way for the championship as John Cena defends against Wade Barrett, uh, Daniel Bryan and Roman Reigns. That sounds about right, yeah. Twist the arm there by Sheamus. But Mark Henry straight back up and Sheamus takes him straight back down and Sheamus building some momentum here. This is a power slam. <clears throat> on the much bigger Mark Henry. Sheamus brings Henry back up to his feet. Up on his shoulders. Going to go for white noise and he hits it. Sheamus hits the white noise. Can we have a brand new European champion here? One, two. No, Mark Henry kicks out. Sheamus now putting Henry across to that rope. And Henry now launching Sheamus over the top. Henry rolls out to join Sheamus on the outside. But Sheamus rolls straight in to avoid Henry. And now Sheamus playing a game here, just avoiding Henry by any means necessary. Now Sheamus finally joins Henry on the outside. The two clash and now Henry throws Sheamus into that barrier. And then just a clothesline across the back. And now Mark Henry has Sheamus up. Gorilla press into the power slam. And now Mark Henry has Sheamus up into the world's strongest slam, but it's on the outside. He's not going to be able to get the full effect on it. However, the referee's still counting. Could Mark Henry win this one by count out? No, Sheamus slides straight back in just in time. And hits the bro kick out of nowhere. Into the pin. One, two, and three. We've got a brand new European champion here. Sheamus. Looked like it was down and out being hit by the world's strongest slam on the outside. Slides back into the ring and catches Mark Henry straight away with that bro kick. What a fantastic finish this match. This was the pin straight from the white noise. And here's that gorilla press into the power slam on the outside. And then here it is. Sheamus runs straight back into the ring and catches Mark Henry with a... A bro kick out of nowhere. Rolls him up for the win. So we have a brand new European champion. Mark Henry only held that belt for a few weeks. And now we have a new champion. A new champion in the form of Sheamus. We have a European guy as the European champion, which is great to see. Unlucky for Mark Henry. Not the longest title reign in the entire world, but well done to Sheamus. And our next match here this evening will be Kane taking on Chris Jericho. Jericho offering a handshake before this match starts. Ah no, we knew it was too good to be true. A low blow on Kane. And Jericho takes the early advantage here. Brings Kane back up to his feet, but Kane is back in this one. There's the big boot to Jericho, and 
I think if anything, Jericho might have just pissed Kane off. Not sure that low blow was the wisest move by Jericho. Kane with a backdrop. Pulls Jericho in. Going to go for the early pin here. One. Not even a one count. Referee's arm didn't even start going down before Jericho kicked out. There's a knee to stomach by Jericho. And now Kane stands up tall again. Now remember this feud has been ongoing now for a few weeks. And it started before the last pay-per-view. The game sort of glitched out. And I think we had... Um, we have Shawn Michaels versus... CM Punk set as the feud and the games decided that it would be Kane versus CM Punk on the uh, on the first week of the pay-per-view or the first week of the month even and uh, during the match I, I was just assuming that Shawn Michaels was going to come out and challenge CM Punk at the end or Shawn Michaels was going to interfere and, but instead at the end of the match Jericho came out and attacked Kane with a steel pipe no idea why the game just decided it was going to do that by itself so since then um yeah, these two feuded. The feud ended the week before SummerSlam as Kane was tied up with the European Championship match at SummerSlam. And since then, the feud seems to have picked back up here. And you see Jericho there with that step up in Siguri now, just a stomp to the back of the arm. Kane fighting back though, and there's a running DDT on Chris Jericho. Kane just pulls Jericho into the centre of the ring. Going for the pin here. One, two. And oh, so close to a three from the running DDT. Kane nearly had this one. And then out of nowhere, Kane and Jericho stare each other down. And Kane just grabs Jericho by the throat. And there's the choke slam. Could this be all here? A very quick match if it is. One, two. And three. And it is. Kane picks up a quick. And convincing victory here over his rival, Chris Jericho. Big, big victory here for Kane. Jericho, of course, is a, is a title contender in this universe mode. But it's Kane who picks up the victory and just stands over the fallen Jericho. Just uh, gratified by what he's just done. No flames. Or is it going to be flames now? There we go. Boom. Kane victorious here. He may have won the battle, but has he won the war? We'll have to find out in the next few weeks. And our next match here this evening will be Stone Cold Steve Austin taking on Hollywood Hulk Hogan. And here we go, we are underway. We know Austin's been angling for a championship match against Shawn Michaels at SummerSlam. Nothing in stone as yet, but uh, you feel that if he picks up a few victories in the next few weeks, it might be hard for the, the management here to say no. A couple of back elbows against Hogan. We've still taken a step back of Hogan at the moment. I know we, uh, I think we overused him over the first few months. I think he was feuding in the first month against Sting. Uh, I think the second month against The Rock. The third month he feuded against uh, The Ultimate Warrior. So this month we're, we're having a little bit of a Hogan break. Although he is still getting involved in some of these feuds. As you see. Interesting though. It's a, a match that I don't think ever happened. I, I might be wrong. Let me know in the comments if I am. But I'm not sure if Austin and Hogan ever faced each other. I think by the time... Hogan came back to the WWE. Austin had already retired due to injuries. I know everyone still mentions something about Austin coming back and wrestling one more match, but I just don't think his body's up to it now. I think he's a, uh, I think he's happy doing what he's doing. He's happy doing his podcast and the, uh, and the um, tough enough that sort of stuff. But uh, does he do tough enough? I don't think he did actually, did he? I don't honestly know. But I, I can't see him coming back and wrestling one more. I think the, the match he could have come back and wrestled was uh, was CM Punk. But obviously Punk's gone now as well. And it wouldn't surprise me if Punk does come back one day. Just for a, 
a couple of matches. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me. At the same time, it would surprise me if Punk came back because I think he's um. I think he's made his decision. I don't think he was happy. I don't think he wants to wrestle anymore. And uh, yeah, it's a shame because I would love to see Punk come back and just do one more, like Royal Rumble to to WrestleMania. He's definitely got it in his locker as Austin locks in the camel clutch. Austin locking in a submission hold here on uh, on Hogan. And of course, it would be amazing if uh, if Punk and AJ came back and just took over WWE. Just uh, if he won the championship and she won the women's championship, that'd be a fantastic little uh, little swan song for the pair of them. Running DDT there by Hogan. Doing a great job here on Austin. Of course, Austin is the cover star of the 2K16 game, so he's definitely involved. I wonder if we'll get different variations of Austin or whether, or whether we'll just get the uh, the standard Austin you see in the ring now. If we're going to get like a stunning Steve Austin with like, the long blonde hair. I think he was part of the Hollywood Blondes, if I remember correctly. That might, I might be wrong. Now Austin just mounting Hogan and just laying punches to the side of the head. But Hogan's having none of it. He's back up to his feet. And Austin takes him straight back down with that huge clothesline. And now just the elbows to the face. Straight for the pin. One, two. Only a two can. I thought that could be all there. That's not all, but this very much could be. Austin hits a stunner on Hogan. Brings him into the centre of the ring. Going to go for the pin. One, two, and three. Stone Cold Steve Austin here, victorious over the legend of Hulk Hogan. This is definitely going to enhance his chances of going for that championship in the near future. Obviously, he's angling at it for the next pay-per-view. Against Shawn Michaels. Michaels has been that champion ever since the uh, the very first pay-per-view, I believe, when he won it in a, a an elimination chamber. He defended it against um, The Undertaker and again against somebody else. And there is Shawn Michaels. And maybe Michaels has heard Austin's requests for a championship match. And it looks like this might be on here. And now we move into our main event here this evening as The Rock takes on Edge. Aaron, here comes Triple H to ringside. We know Triple H and The Rock have been... Sort of at each other's throats over the last few weeks. And it looks like Triple H is out here to... to. Well, I, I was going to say cheer on Edge, but I think his main... His main um, idea at being here is probably to distract The Rock to a point for Edge to win this match. Great clothesline by Edge. And Edge is one of the guys who I'd like to probably use a bit more as a singles competitor, however... As a tag team competitor, he really uh, he makes it on this roster. As Triple H is up on the apron here, trying to get The Rock's attention. It may have worked as Edge is in control of this match. Triple H drops back down. Now Rock gets back in. Going for a Russian leg sweep and hits it. And again, Triple H is trying to get The Rock's attention. He finally does. The Rock comes across and... Uh, Like he was going outside there, and uh, Triple H backed off. The Rock came back into the ring, and now Edge with that DDT. And there's a running clothesline as well by the Edge. The Edge, just Edge. No, no, no. The it's the Rock and Edge. Now Triple H is in the ring while the two guys are on the outside. Now Triple H is really, really getting involved here, where the referee probably should be holding him back. Edge with a back elbow again. Edge doing well here against The Rock. Obviously, The Rock is distracted by the attendance of Triple H on the outside. And again, Triple H up on the apron. And again, he gets The Rock's attention. The Rock. Rock and Triple H having a bit of an argument there. And Edge, Edge just sort of stood back and uh, left it to happen. Probably should have uh, tried to... Um, to take advantage while he had the chance. Rock knocks Triple H off the apron there. As he tried to get his attention again. But Edge this time is on top of it. And grabs Rock from behind. And hits that belly to back slam. 
I'm now wrenching back that arm. Not quite got enough of it to make it into an arm bar. Rock went for the uh, delay in the smackdown. Edge avoided it, but got caught with the belly to belly. Rock bringing Edge back up to his feet. Now Rock twisting the arm of Edge, and again, Triple H comes up to the apron, distracting the Rock enough for Edge to get back in control. And there's the big boot to the uh, the head of the seated Rock, and now just some punches to the side of the head. Triple H here is really doing an effective job of distracting the Rock. And there's Edge with that flat DDT. And I can't see Triple H. I don't know if he's gone. Has Triple H gone backstage or has he just got out of the camera? Looks like Triple H has gone. Looks like he may have. He may have thinks he's done enough. No. Triple H is still distracting the Rock now from the other side. And now Edge just clubbing the Rock from behind. Now it looks like Triple H is making his way backstage. But Edge has probably got the Rock exactly where he needs him. I take it back. Rock catching Edge with a dragon screw. Went for a stomp, but Edge fights his way out. Edge catching Rock with the clothesline here. Now going for the pin. One, two. No, only a two count. No, only one count, sorry. Edge now bringing Rock into that backbreaker. I thought Edge may have been lining up that spear. Thought better of it. Thinks he needs to do a little bit more damage. And evidently it does as the Rock catches him again with that suplex. Not quite a belly to belly. If you're looking at it, he sort of catches Edge under the armpits and launches him across. And now Edge is setting up for the spear. Edge hits the spear into the pin. One, two, and f no. Two, the Rock kicks out at the last possible second. And this match continues on. As a Rock locking in a camel clutch on Edge. We've seen the Rock use submissions in the past. Normally the sharp shoot to the camel clutch is quite a new one. And Edge finally catches the ropes. Rock breaks the hold. Edge reverses the suplex into a neckbreaker. And the longer this match goes on, the uh, the longer you may think the Triple H may have left ringside pretty prematurely. He definitely got inside the head of the Rock. And there's the execution. Maybe he didn't leave too prematurely. And that's it. Edge defeats the Rock here. The Rock also busted open as well. Triple H definitely in the mind of the Rock here this evening. Distract him to a point, allowing Edge to pick up the victory. Allowing Edge to, to gain several opportunities to get the upper hand in this match. And finally, you see here, hitting that spear. That was only for a two count, though. And then finally hitting the execution. Which are we going to get to see here? Yep, yeah, there it is, the execution. In for the free count. One, two, and three. As I say, the Rock here. It's not completely against the odds for Edge to win this match. Of course, one half of the Tag Team Champions. However, I wonder how much of Edge's win was down to Triple H's uh, attendance in the Rock's head, shall we say. Well, anyway, guys, that is the end of this episode of Friday Night Raw is War. Hope you all enjoyed it. We've seen a brand new champion crowned and some great matches and, of course, some, uh, some great continuations and beginnings of new feuds that we can take into our next pay-per-view of course as i mentioned below if you check out the description below you can find um links to all the other brands that i'm currently running in my universe maybe be sure to check some of those out especially if you like your indie wrestling i do a great ring of honor global force and combat zone wrestling uh, if you could like this video that'd be great it really helps me out and of course if you could subscribe that'd be even better i've been shabby gamer thank you very much for watching and goodbye <laughs>